this is Chicago music. This is Chicago girl, so I got that going. Hi. Um, where does the love go when the love is gone? It's got to go somewhere, right? Where does the love go? I've checked under the cushions and the couch, the backs of drawers, the car's glove box that only has one glove in it. I've checked the floor on the back of the closet with all the shoes that I'll never wear. But I can't find it. Where does the love go when the love is gone? from a show I did in Chicago called Seeing a Psychiatrist. That was one of them. And, yeah. and speaking of shows, I had my first show in Austin last, in the, May, in the beginning of May. It was really awesome, cool, at the Baha'i Center. And I have another feature coming up on June 4th, also at the Baha'i Center, because June is a woman and it's all about women. Yeah. And if you people know me, I write about like the angry things and dealing with acquaintance rape and how women have been downtrodden and they're like, no, 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 this is supposed to be like happy and make you feel good stuff. I'm not a white feminist. So, so I, I'm like, all right, then I'm going to work on stuff about how empowered we are and how wonderful we are and how groovy we are or whatever. So there's going to be something like that coming up on June 4th. And thank you, Tom in your world poet for that. Um, these, these last two I'm going to read are from a show that was called Unplugged, and uh, I had candles everywhere, and I had John over here on guitar for them, but that, I don't have a guitar, no, sorry. This one, uh, first one's called Don't Go to Denny's. <sighs> so one morning, leaving New Orleans on a New Year's Day, right head back to Chicago, she said that we should stop at a Denny's for breakfast. And I get it. Remember being a goth drama kid hanging out at Denny's at all hours of the night because you were too young to drink at a bar. But I don't go to Denny's because one year after partying for New Year's in DC, Paul, one of my buddies that was there, said that he wanted to go to this diner in Delaware for breakfast. Now, we hadn't had anything to eat, and we'd been no. drinking forever for New Orleans, for New Year's, and so we thought that this would be a great idea, and so off we went. Now, as I said, we hadn't eaten, and we were starving in Maryland, so once we saw an exit to Annapolis, we thought, well, this is a cool place to grab something to eat. And we walked into an empty Denny's, which didn't even have locks in the doors because they're always open. And they sat us at a booth and they took our order. The waitress brought Paul's Grand Slam and whatever I ordered. An omelet, hash browns. But after we started eating, a really big man entered Denny's. And even though the Denny's was empty, they sat him right behind me in the booth right next to us. And he was built like Chief Wiggum. Yeah. And he shook my seat when he worked his way in. I, I thought of that Simpsons episode where Wiggum was in a booth at a diner and Lou had to stab Wiggum's seat with a switchblade, popping it like a balloon so that Wiggum could actually get out of the booth. So he was in his seat and he moved my booth seat six inches toward my table and he immediately lit up a huge cigar that smelled like burning manure. Now, how would I know what burning manure smells like? Well, look, I worked on a farm. I lived on one for a bit, so when I tried to eat right there, all I could smell was that burning manure. So, not two minutes after Wiggum sat down, I started hearing noises from my seat, and it started moving from the guy behind me. A minute into the gurgling noises, which sounded more and more like heaves, I suddenly heard what sounded like wet concrete splattering against cement. This man right behind me was shaking and threw up for over one minute. Now, instead of burning manure, it could all smell was like his alcohol and bile. So I said to Paul right then and there, we are leaving and not paying for this food still eating. Paul said, what? Why? <laughs> so 
So after I tyrannically whispered about the smells and sounds of the fat man's vomiting escapades, this nonplussed friend of mine, Paul, relented and followed me to leave. I gave the waitress a tip, but the people at Dunny's understood why we wouldn't pay. So yeah, we did go to that diner in Delaware, and the food was good, and, and no one vomited. And you know, for a minute there, I even thought about getting biscuits and gravy. <laughs> but that New Year's, I resolved to never eat at Dunny's again. <laughs> One. I felt like I was never there. You! <laughs> so I decided to sneak off one night and go camping with Sam and Vern. We all rolled out our sleeping bags on the far side of the field at night. Sam had brought a hurricane lamp, but he didn't have any oil for it. So him and Vern went down the street, broke into a garage there, got a can of lawnmower gasoline. Because, you know, it makes perfect sense to use gasoline in your oil lamp. <laughs> but anyway, in the shadows, when the street, by the street, in the dark, they planned to fill this hurricane lamp with gas. But in the shadows, they couldn't see what they were doing. So Sam said that he needed more lights so that he could see to fill up this oil lamp with gas. So Vern decided to pull out a lighter. Vern, the bright one, was going to light the way, I suppose. <laughs> and Vern lit the lighter, but there still wasn't enough light. And keep in mind that we were hiding in bushes by a street with a lamppost. What to do, what to do. Sam asked Vern to move the lighter closer. <laughs> I mean, these two flunked their way through a couple of years of school, and I know I was young, but I knew that this wasn't a good idea, so I started to back away. And after I turned, Vern apparently got the lighter too close. I was already 20 feet away when I felt the heat and saw an orange glow from a fireball. I started to run, but as I was running, I looked back and saw two fireballs in the air. One was the lantern, the other was the gas can. And I swear to God, the lantern crashed down to the street and set the entire street on fire. The gas can landed uphill from the lantern, pouring gasoline down the streets so of flames, then ran up to the gas can, further spreading no! the street fire. No! I grabbed my sleeping bag and ran because I heard the sirens and if anyone saw me, I just said that I had to act like, well, no, I was never there. Everyone give it up for Janet.